This is the GMK Tech Evo X2, and this has been my favorite mini PC for the past two months. I made two videos on this. We kind of took a first look at it. We also ran Bazite Linux on this machine, and it's definitely a mini powerhouse. In fact, this does have the most powerful iGPU on the market right now because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. The iGPU here is on par with something like an RTX 4060 or even the Radeon RX 7600 non-XT, and given that it's an iGPU, that's some pretty impressive performance. If you're interested in checking out my first look video or Linux gaming on this thing, I'll leave links for both of those videos in the description. But the first thing I wanted to talk about here were the internals. So I have pulled the shell off and it is constructed of aluminum. This thing does come with a 230 watt power supply because uh, it can boost up to 140 watts and that's just out of the box. Over here on this side, we've got two M.2 slots and this did come pre-installed with a two terabyte drive, but you can add two eight terabyte M.2 SSDs here, bringing it up to a total of 16 terabytes. This fan is RGB. It's controllable from a button on the front. And it's really just here to cool those M.2s off. Over here on the other side, we've got the cooling system for that Max Plus 395. And with this, like I mentioned, it'll do up to 140 watts. We've got a dual blower system with a pretty beefy heat sink here. I think GMK Tech has done a great job with this setup. If you take a look around the back, all of the air will be vented out of the rear of this unit. Give you a quick rundown on the specs here. So we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads. The CPU is based on Zen 5. We've got a base clock of three gigahertz and it will boost up to 5.1, 64 megabytes of L3 cache. But the big thing here is that iGPU. It's known as the Radeon 8060S. It's based on RDNA 3.5 and we've got 40 compute units. To kind of give you an idea, something like the Ryzen Z1 Extreme has 12 compute units for that iGPU, so we've got quite a lot here, on par with some of their desktop GPUs. It'll clock up to 2900 megahertz. The unit I have here has 128 gigabytes of LP DDR5X running at 8000 megahertz. This is non-user replaceable, and you can get this with either 3264 or 128. With the 128 version, we can dedicate up to 96 gigs to VRAM. Two M.2 2280 slots, PCIe 4.0, 8 terabytes each, up to 16 terabyte total, Wi Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro on this machine. Getting in here a bit closer because there's definitely a few things that I want to show you with this device. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads. I've dedicated 64 gigs of VRAM to the uh, Radeon 8060S iGPU here. Remember, we've got 40 compute units, 64 gigs of VRAM because we've got a total of 128 gigabytes of RAM. We can go up to 96 gigs and we have to do it from uh, AMD software, but this is gonna be plenty even if we wanna run LLMs. If you're looking for just a straight AI device, going up to 96 may help in some circumstances. We've also got that XDNA NPU, but we're really going to be relying on this 8060S for a lot of the AI capabilities that we can test on this machine right now. I also wanted to show you what kind of TDP we're working with here. On the manufacturer's website, it states that we've got a boost up to 140 and it comes down to around 120. Now we can change this with a third party application. I've actually been going up to a consistent 150 watts with it using something like Universal X86 Tuning Utility just to get the most out of this machine. I've got hardware info right here. This is gonna be our TDP. And even just stressing the CPU out, you can see that this will boost on up. So it should hit 140 for about 10 seconds and then come on down to around 110, 15, 120, right around that area there. There we go. So right there at 120 right now. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely pulling some wattage, but you gotta remember this CPU or this APU rather, does have that higher end iGPU built in, and it will require more power to get the clocks up on all 16 cores, 32 threads on the CPU side. And then we're also gonna need some to get that iGPU up. So one thing that AMD has been touting with this is its AI capabilities. And uh, to tell you the truth, a dedicated GPU is gonna be much better than this. If you wanted to go with AMD, go with one of their newer 9000 series cards. But if you're looking for an APU to run LLMs, image generation, and video generation, it's kind of hard to beat what we've got here. I've got Amuse, 
So I do like this application because it's super easy to use and it's fully compatible with AMD. But right now with the latest AMD driver, I cannot get the AMD XDNA super resolution working here with video generation. So I do need to disable this. Basically what we can do here is create a video. We're gonna just go with one video. We're gonna do quality and we're gonna make it six seconds. We can make a cute raccoon playing a guitar in the beach, but I'm gonna go with something else. We'll see what this does. But uh, real quick, I do wanna bring this up over on the side just so we can get a look at uh, exactly what's getting uh, stressed out once we do this. So a single video, we're gonna go with quality, uh, six seconds, and we'll generate this video. So it's gonna take 96 steps here to get the images generated. Then it needs to compile them and put them in the correct order so it can create that six second video for us. And of course, if we went with a four second or a two second, it's gonna be much quicker. We're already up to around 25 seconds. So I'll speed this up a bit. And while this is going, you can see uh, we're not hitting up that NPU because we're not using the AMD XDNA super resolution uh, option here. Not exactly sure what's going on, but with this latest driver, it's just not working with Amuse, so I believe it just needs to be updated. We could usually use the NPU when upscaling. It's all dependent on this GPU, the 8060S. And there we have it. So six seconds, did 140 frames in 231 seconds. And uh, if we were to use something like the 9070 XT, this is gonna be cut more than half. It's just a more powerful GPU. We're working with the iGPU here, but still given that this was all dependent on the compute for the iGPU, not bad for video generation. We could also go with some image generation here, but uh, the next thing I wanted to take a look at was um, LM Studio. So from here, we're just gonna use a uh, DeepSeek R1 Distilled, load it in, and then we can start chatting or asking it questions. You could go with Llama if you want to. I'm actually downloading it right now in the background. The smaller Meta Llama, but I've been using DeepSeek on this system here and it's pretty decent. So we can just ask it basically anything. And it's gonna give us the answer. This is all running locally on the machine so we don't have to hit up the web or anything. And it's using the CPU right now. So there are other applications that will allow you to use this iGPU, but I've been using LM Studio with my NVIDIA stuff, so I figured we'd go ahead and test it over here also. And once that's finished up, should give us a time on which this was generated. And as you saw, this was actually all running on the CPU here, and this did 13.10 tokens per second. So overall, not too bad. And you can use this Max Plus 395 for AI, as you saw with uh, video generation, image generation, and large language models like this. But the next thing I wanna take a look at are some synthetic benchmarks, and then we're gonna move into some gaming. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, and this is a really great score. Remember, we do have that boost up to 140 watts, Single core, 3,076, a little over 20,000 on multi-core. This is a mobile chip, so this is really good. I've actually seen that in Linux over on the Geekbench browser, that multi-core can get up to around 23,000 over there. Checking out some GPU performance, we've got 3D Mark Steel Nomad coming in with the 22,004. FPS with this was 2205, and this is on par with something like an RTX 4060 non-TI variant. And the final one we have here is Time Spy, total score 11,253. So when it comes down to it, I mean, yeah, like a desktop variant of the RX 7600 eight gig model, so the non-XT or an RTX 4060. Given that this is an iGPU built in to this APU, really good synthetic scores here. But now it's time to show off some gaming with this thing. Checking out Spider-Man 2, 1440p, very high settings, FSR set to balanced, and originally I went in here with FSR set to quality, but it did get kind of close to going under 60 in some areas, and it's really just the game. If you take a look at Afterburner in the top left-hand corner, you can see we're getting close to 150 watts in total, so this is that iGPU and CPU. I mean, it's definitely pumping out some performance, but we can get a lot more out of this, especially if you don't mind fake frames. Now, I know there's people out there that just hate fake frames, but on an iGPU, even though we've got the most powerful iGPU on the market at the time of making this video, it can really help out. So taking a look at it now, very high settings, 1440p with FSR frame gen on, we're seeing an average over 130 FPS with this game.
Next one we have here is Doom the Dark Ages, and I was pretty impressed by this because uh, recently I've been testing the RTX 5060, the 8 gig and the 16. When it comes to the 8 gig model, we are beating what that card can do, and this is an iGPU. We did have to drop it down to high, FSR is set to balanced, but we're getting over 60 FPS, and if we had the same setup on that 8 gig RTX 5060, it does dip under. I mean, I was really impressed seeing this. Borderlands 3 is another one I wanted to test, 1440p, ultra, 100% resolution scale, getting over 90 FPS on average. And uh, recently, uh, with a lot of the AMD and even NVIDIA drivers, I've been getting a lot of frame stutter with this game. Seems to be clearing up a bit with this newer AMD driver, but it's still here. Every once in a while, I do see that stutter come in, especially when there's a lot of particle effects on screen. And if you're playing Borderlands 3, right, there's always gonna be particle effects on screen. Next game I wanted to test was Marvel Rivals, 1440p, high with FSR set to balance, looking at an average of 77 FPS. And if we drop this down to 1080, we can get over 120 FPS on average, even during battle. So I would definitely want to play this at 1080, still fully playable like that. And finally, you know we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. 1440p ultra this is actually the ultra preset so it automatically takes fsr to quality looking pretty decent here seeing an average of around 74 fps by the end of this run here with the way i've got it set up so of course you could always take the resolution down get much more out of it take fsr to balanced if you want to but it is playable like this and it does look great we're only at FSR quality, so it's not taking too much away from that 1440p. But again, just like Spider-Man 2, there's a lot more that we can get. So we've got FSR 3 frame gen here, ultra settings, 1440p, over 120 FPS on average. And I'll tell you, this is how I've been playing it on this system. I don't mind using frame gen on something like this because without it, we can get over 60. That way we're just adding a little more to it. It's not gonna dip under and it still looks great like this. But if you didn't wanna use FSR frame gen, you don't have to with this system. Overall, I've really been enjoying the Evo X2, and in my opinion, it's the best mini PC that GMK Tech has ever created. I'm sure something more powerful will come down the road, but without a dedicated GPU, this thing is putting down some really great performance. But there are a couple downsides here. Now with any mini PC, upgradability is kind of non-existent, except for when it comes to uh, storage and sometimes RAM. With this, we can upgrade the RAM, but we can upgrade the storage, we can go up to 16 terabytes, which is more than enough for a lot of people out there. But the second downside is going to be pricing on this thing. Anything with the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is really expensive, and a lot of the cost does come down to AMD's price on the chip itself. That's why we're seeing these things at such high price tags. You can definitely build a powerful gaming PC for the price of one of these things, but you're not going to get this form factor. So in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. You definitely don't have to buy this, but if you're looking for one of the best mini PCs on the market, I'd say the GMK Tech Evo X2 is definitely at the top of my list. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to learn a little more about the GMK Tech Evo X2, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.